best, BookBits.com presents the book summary of Life Without Limits by Nick Vujicic. This is an inspiring book by an extraordinary man. Born without arms or legs, Nick Vujicic overcome his disability to live not just independently, but a rich, fulfilling life, becoming a model for anyone seeking true happiness. Now an internationally successful motivational speaker, his central message is that the most important goal for anyone is to find their life's purpose despite whatever difficulties or seemingly impossible odds stand in their way. Nick tells a story of his physical abilities and his emotional battle he endured trying to deal with them as a child, a teen and a young adult. He shares how his faith in God has been a central source of his strength and explains that once he found his own sense of purpose, inspiring others to make their lives and the world better, he found the confidence to build a rewarding and productive life without limits. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. You can find the audio summary on Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcast. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Life Without Limits. Introduction. On a side note, I will be speaking as if I am Nick Vujicic, but I am not. I am Michael from Best Book Bits. So introduction. My name is Nick Vujicic, pronounced Vujicic. I am 27 years old. I was born without any limbs but I am not constrained by my circumstances. I travel the world encouraging millions of people to overcome adversity with faith, hope, love, and courage so that they may pursue their dreams. In this book, I will share with you my experiences in dealing with adversity and obstacles, some of them unique to me, but most universal to us all. My goal is to encourage you to overcome your own challenges and hardships so you can find your own purpose and pathway to a ridiculously good life. Often we feel that life is unfair, Hard times and tough circumstances can trigger self-doubt and despair. I understand that well, but the Bible says, consider it pure joy. Whenever you face trials of any kinds, that is a lesson I struggled many years to learn. I eventually figured it out, and through my experiences, I can help you see that most of the hardships we face provide us with opportunities to discover who we are meant to be and what we can share our gifts to benefit others. If you have the desire and passion to do something and it's within God's will, you will achieve it. To live without limits, you need a powerful sense of purpose. Hope so strong that it cannot be diminished. Faith in God and the infinite possibilities. Love and self-acceptance. Attitude with altitude. A courageous spirit. Willingness to change. A trusting heart. Hunger for opportunities and the ability to assess risks and to laugh at life. A mission to serve others first. Life without limits. Take a moment to think about any limitations you've placed on your life or that you've allowed others to place on it. Now think about what it would be like to be free of those limitations. What would your life be if anything were possible? What would your life be if anything were possible? Too often we tell ourselves we aren't smart enough or attractive enough or talented enough to pursue our dreams. We buy into what others say about us or we put restrictions on ourselves. What's worse is that when you consider yourself unworthy, you are putting limits on how God can work through you. When you give up on your dreams, you put God in a box. When you give up on your dreams, you put God in a box. I have a choice. You have a choice. We can choose to dwell on disappointments and shortcomings. We can choose to be bitter, angry, or sad. Or when faced with hard times and hurtful people, we can choose to learn from the experience and move forward, taking responsibility for our own happiness. Life isn't always rosy, but it is always worth living. No matter what your circumstances may be, as long as you are breathing, you have a contribution to make. However desperate your life may seem, there is hope. As bad as circumstances appear, there are better days ahead. No matter how dire your circumstances may appear, you can rise above them. To wish for change will change nothing. To make the decision to take action right now will change everything. Take action right now will change everything. Some injuries heal more quickly if you keep moving. The same is true of setbacks in life. Perhaps you lose a job. A relationship may not work out. Maybe the bills are piling up. Don't put your life on hold so you can dwell on the unfairness of past hurts. Look instead for ways to move forward. You can always control what happens to you. There are some occurrences in life that are not your fault or within your power to stop. The choice you have is to either give up or to keep on striving for a better life. My advice is to know that everything happens for a reason, and in the end, good will come of it. You see, I don't think we are ever given more than we can handle. I promise you that for every disability you have, 
you are blessed with more than enough abilities to overcome your challenges. Remember, God helps those who help themselves. God helps those who help themselves. It's still up to you to keep striving to serve the highest purpose for your talents and your dreams in the world around you. If you aren't where you want to be, or you haven't achieved all you hope to achieve, the reason most likely resides not around you, but within you. Not around you, but within you. Take responsibility, and then take action. When you find something that so fully engages you that you would do it for free all day, every day, then you are on course. When you find someone who is willing to pay for it, then you have a career. The Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Make it happen. What lies ahead may be far better than anything you ever thought possible. What happens from this very moment is up to you and your maker. If you're still searching for your path in life, know that it's okay to feel a little frustration. This is a marathon, not a sprint. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Your yearning for more meaning is a sign that you're growing, moving beyond limitations, and developing your talents. It's healthy to look at where you are from time to time and to consider whether your actions and priorities are serving your highest purpose. Lighting the way. Life without meaning has no hope. Life without hope has no faith. If you find a way to contribute, you will find your meaning and hope and faith will naturally flow and accompany you into your future. Happiness comes through fidelity to a worthy purpose. Happiness comes through fidelity to a worthy purpose. What does that mean? It means that being faithful to your gifts, growing them, sharing them, and taking joy in them. It means moving beyond the pursuit of self-satisfaction to more mature search for meaning and fulfillment. The greatest rewards come when you give of yourself. The greatest rewards come when you give of yourself. It's about better in the lives of others, being part of something bigger than yourself, and making a positive difference. In today's world, even though we may be fully conscious of the spiritual emptiness of material attainment, we still need reminders that fulfillment has nothing to do with having possessions. Most sensible people know that there are no easy routes to long-term happiness. If you place your bets on temporary pleasures, you will find only temporary satisfaction. With cheap thrills, you get what you pay for. Here today, gone tomorrow. Life isn't about having, it's about being. You could surround yourself with all the money you can buy and you'll still be as miserable as a human can be. You'll find contentment when your talents and passion are completely engaged in full force. Recognize instant self-gratification for what it is. The if I just had X, I would be happy syndrome is a mass delusion. When you look for happiness in mere objects, they are not enough. Look around, look within. Miracles happen, but only for those who hang on to hope. You may not control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond. Be a friend when you need friendship. Give hope when you most need it. Dare to dream. Have the courage to pursue your own dreams, but never doubt your ability to meet whatever challenges come your way. A passage in the Bible says, Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not be faint. Keep moving ahead because action creates momentum, which in turn creates unanticipated opportunities. Sometimes all you will have is your belief that anything is possible, that miracles can happen. The world around you may be in chaos, but you should not give in to despair. Life may not be going well for you now, but as long as you're here, as long as you press forward, anything is possible. Live with hope in your heart. Labels can provide a temporary hiding place. Some people use them as an excuse, others rise above them. Many, many people have been labeled handicapped or disabled, only to soar above, enjoying dramatic lives and doing important things. I encourage you to rise above any attempts to restrict you from exploring and developing your gifts. Welcome them as character building experiences. Welcome them as character building experiences. Learn from them and rise above them. You may have an excellent dream. Just be open minded enough to accept that God may have a different path for you than the one you envisioned. 
there are many ways to reach your dream. So don't be discouraged if you can't yet see the way on your own. Hope is a catalyst. It can even move obstacles that seem immovable. When you keep pushing, refusing to give up, you create momentum. Hope creates opportunities you should never have anticipated. Helpful people are drawn to you. Doors open. Paths are cleared. Remember, action brings reaction. When you are tempted to abandon your dreams, push yourself to continue one more day, one more week, one more month, and one more year. You'll be amazed at what happens when you refuse to quit. You will be amazed at what happens when you refuse to quit. There is power in perseverance. We need to take responsibility for our own happiness and success. Your friends and family may reach out to you in times of need. Be grateful for that. Welcome their efforts, but keep pushing on your own too. The more effort you put into it, the more opportunities you create. Sometimes you may feel like you're just about to realize your goal, only to fall short. That is no reason to quit. And remember, defeat happens only to those who refuse to try again. Only when you let your emotions control your actions do you risk spiraling down into depression and self-destructive behaviors. Faith is defined in the Bible as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith as an acronym, full assurance in the heart. I may not be able to produce evidence for the things that I believe in, but I feel fully assured in my heart that I am much closer to the truth by living with faith than I would be by living in despair. Trust that there are possibilities for your life. The key to moving forward even in hard times is to let your vision for your life be guided not by what you can see, but by what you can imagine. That's called having faith. Believe the possibility is there. If you can imagine a better future, you can believe it. And if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Trust that it happens all for the good. Even tragedies can turn into triumphs. Have faith whenever life jumps up and takes a bite out of your plans and dreams. It will happen. We all get hit by unexpected waves now and then. Only the seeds thrown on good soil are able to grow and produce a crop and create many more seeds than were originally sown. The great inspirational author Norman Vincent Peale once said, Become a possibilitarian. No matter how dark your life seems to be, raise your sights and see the possibilities. Always see them, for they are always there. No matter what your situation or circumstances, you can always have the choice of responding either in a negative way or in a positive way. You can never change your past, but you can change your future. You can never change your past, that is a fact, but you absolutely can change your future. We become vulnerable and fall into victim's mentality when we base how we feel on ourselves, on other people's opinions, or compare ourselves with others. When you are unwilling to accept yourself, you are less willing to accept others, and that can lead to loneliness and isolation. When you judge yourself harshly or put intense pressure on yourself, you become judgmental on others. Instead of dwelling on your imperfections, your fallings, or your mistakes, focus on your blessings and the contribution you can make, whether it's a talent, knowledge, wisdom, creativity, hard work, or a nurturing soul. You don't have to live up to anyone else's expectations. You can define your own version of perfection. You must believe in your own beauty and value as someone who can make a difference, someone who matters. Finding your purpose is the first important step to living a life without limits. Maintaining hope for the future and faith in the possibilities, even in difficult times, will keep you moving towards that goal. But to be fulfilled, you must know in your heart that you are worthy of success and happiness. You must love yourself. The only important measure of your beauty and value as a person should be the one that comes from within. Love yourself enough to laugh at yourself. Sometimes through our own doing, we make little problems big by taking them way too seriously. We are all perfectly imperfect beings. Some of us may be more than others, but we all have flaws and our shortcomings. Laughter has been shown to reduce stress by releasing endorphin hormones, the body's natural relaxant, boosting your immune system and improving your blood flow while also increasing oxygen to the brain. Celebrate your uniqueness. Celebrate your uniqueness. 
We humans are a silly bunch. We spend half our time trying to fit in with the crowd and the other half trying to stand out from it. If you can't resolve your own issues, be the solution for someone else. Loving and accepting yourself is the only surefire cure for self-pity and victimhood. My best advice for finding inner happiness is to reach outside of yourself, to use your talents and brains and personality to make life better for someone else. The psychologist and philosopher William James, who taught at Harvard University, said that one of the greatest discoveries of his generation was the realization that by changing our attitudes, we can change our lives. Whether you are aware of it or not, you view the world through your own unique perspectives or attitudes based on your beliefs of what is good or bad, wrong or right, fair or unfair. Your decisions and actions are based on those attitudes. So if what you've been doing isn't working, you have the power to adjust your attitude and change your life. The age-old, time-proven, undeniable truth is that you and I may have absolutely no control over what happens to us, but we can control how we respond. If we choose the right attitude, we can rise above whatever challenges we face. Optimism is empowering. It gives you control over your emotions. Pessimism weakens your will and allows your mood to control your actions. With an optimistic outlook, you can adjust your attitude to make the best of bad situations. This is sometimes described as reframing, because while you can't always change your circumstances, you can change the way you look at them. There are many attitudes to choose from, but I believe the most powerful are an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of action, an attitude of empathy, and an attitude of forgiveness. Victimhood is an easy place to hide. We can all claim to be victims of one misfortune or another. Socrates said, let him that would move the world move himself first. When you've been hit and knocked down by an overwhelming loss or tragedy, allow yourself time to grieve and then act to create some good out of the bad. Don't let fear keep you from chasing your dreams. You should treat fear like you treat your smoke detector. Pay attention to it when it goes off, look around to see if there's any real danger or just the alarm ringing. If there's no real threat, put the fear out of your mind and go on with your life. Some people are handicapped by the fear of failure, fear of making mistakes, fear of making a commitment, even fear of success. It's inevitable that fears will come knocking at your door. You don't have to let them in. You send them on their way and then go on yours. You have that choice. Psychologists say that most fears are learned. We are born with only two instinctive fears, fear of loud noises and fear of being dropped. Even as adults, we create fearful fantasies that simply don't match up to reality. This explains why fear is often described as false evidence appearing real. We become so focused on our fears that they become real to us, and as a result, we let them control us. Never say never, because limits like fears are often just an illusion. There is a Japanese proverb that describes my formula for success. Fall seven times, stand up eight. You fail, I fail, the best of us fail, and the rest of us fail too. Those who never rise from defeat often see failure as final. What we all need to remember is that life is not a pass-fail test. It's a trial and error process. Life is not a pass-fail test. It's a trial and error process. Those who succeed bounce back from their bonehead mistakes because they view their setbacks as temporary and as learning experiences. Every successful person I know has messed up at some point. Often they say their mistakes were critical to their success. Mistakes are often critical to your success. Winston Churchill captured the essence of it when he said, Success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. If you can't overcome your defeats, it may be that you have personalized them. The lessons of losing. It's a great teacher. It builds character. It motivates you. It helps you appreciate success. Every winner has played the loser. Failure is on the path to mastery. I realize that if you fail and give up, you will never get up. But if you learn the lessons of failure and keep trying to do your best, the rewards will come. Believe me, I've learned that my schedule isn't necessarily in God's day planner. He has his own timeline, and the rest of us just have to wait for it to unfold. Thomas Edison said that most of those who consider themselves failures 
are people who do not realize how close they were to success before they gave up. They were almost there, going through failure, but still bound for success. But they gave up before the tide could turn for them. Edison also said every wrong attempt discarded is another step forward. If you do your best, God will do the rest, and whatever is meant to come your way will come. The bigger the challenges we endure, the greater our strength of character. For every blocked path, there is an open one. For every disability, there is an ability. Thomas Merton said, A humble man is not afraid of failure. In fact, he is not afraid of anything, even of himself. Since perfect humility implies perfect confidence in the power of God before, whom no other power has any meaning, and for whom there is no such thing as an obstacle. The harder you have to work to achieve a goal, the more you will appreciate it. The tougher the climb, the better the view at the top. There are two major types of change that tend to challenge us and disrupt our day-to-day -day lives. The first happens to us. The second happens within us. We can't control the first, but we can and should control the second. Not what happens to us, but what happens within us is what we can control. Making a positive change has five necessary stages. Number one, recognize the need to change. Number two, envision something new. Number three, letting go of the old. Number four, getting settled. And number five, keep growing. Have you ever felt trapped in circumstances? Then discover that the only trap was your own lack of vision, lack of courage, or failure to see that you had better options. To make a change, you must be able to envision what lies on the other side. You have to have hope and to have faith in God and in your ability to find something better. Knowing whom to trust and how to be trustworthy is critical to your success and happiness. Few people succeed without the ability to build relationships based on mutual understandings and trust. We all need not just someone to love, but also friends, mentors, role models, and supporters who buy into our dream and help us achieve them. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is to try and win friends only by telling them about yourself, your fears, frustrations, and pleasures. The truth is that you win friends by learning about them and finding shared interests to build bonds that provide mutual benefits. Building a relationship is like building a savings account. You can't expect to take anything out of it if you haven't put something into it. You can live a life without limits, but you can't live a life without trusting relationships. That is why you should always self-monitor, assess, and work to develop and refine the ways in which you engage with those around you. God gave you just one mouth, but he gave you two ears, so you should listen twice as much as you speak. You should listen twice as much as you speak. As I've matured, I've learned that listening is the most valuable skill for engaging others. The Bible says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, the door shall be open. It's okay to ask for help. Whether you've got all the standard body parts or not, there will be times when you simply can't go it alone. Yes, humility is a people skill and a God-given gift. You have to be humble to ask others for help. You have to be humble to ask others for help. Whatever good I accomplish is done not by me, but through me. Practice an abundance mentality rather than a scarcity mentality. When you believe in abundance, you believe there are enough of God's blessings, enough fulfillment, enough opportunity, enough happiness, and enough love out there for everyone. The quality of your relationships has a huge impact on the quality of your life. The Bible says two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one there to help him up. Walter Chrysler, founder of the Chrysler Automotive Company, once said that the reason so many people never get anywhere in life is that when opportunity knocks, they are out in the backyard looking for four-leaf clovers. Today I see people buying lottery tickets instead of investing in their futures. Invest in your future by preparing with hard work, dedicate yourself to your goals, and then watch for the right time to make the leap. If you feel you never get a shot, maybe it's because you aren't locked, loaded, and ready to fire. 
Thomas Edison said opportunities are often missed because they are dressed in overalls and look like work. Are you ready to do whatever it takes? To pursue your dreams, you have to take action. Move it or lose it. Act or be acted upon. If you don't have what it, what you want, consider creating what you want. God will light the path, your chance of a lifetime. The door to your dreams is open. Your path to a purpose may present itself at any moment. Be ready for it. Do all you need to do. Learn all you need to know. If no one comes knocking, beat down a few doors. One day, you'll step into the life you desire. Be willing to put yourself out there to embrace the moment. Another day, another opportunity. The choices you make determine the quality of the life you lead. The choices you make determine the quality of life you lead. Be thoughtful, develop high standards and strict criteria for evaluating how you invest your time and energy. Base your choices not on what feels good in the moment, but on what best serves your ultimate goals. Measure them according to your values and principles. We live by faith, not by sight. Imperfection is beauty. Madness is genius, and it's better to be absolutely ridiculous than absolutely boring. You can master every other lesson in this book, but if you aren't willing to take some risks or dare to be called crazy by those who doubt your genius, then you will likely never achieve all that you dream of achieving. And for your sake and the planet's, please dare to be playful too. Don't forget to laugh at yourself and kick up your heels now and then so that you can enjoy the journey. Ridiculous Risk be willing to blow past the doubters and the naysayers and make a leap to live your dreams. Take time to enjoy your life and your loved ones. Laugh, love, and have ridiculous fun so others can share the joy. If you think life is serious, imagine death. Helen Keller, who lost both her sight and hearing in childhood but became a renowned activist and author, said, There is no such thing as a secure life. It does not exist in nature. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Risk, then, is just a part of life. It is life. The place between your comfort zone and your dream is where life takes place. It's the high anxiety zone, but it's also where you discover who you are. There are two types of risk in life. The danger of trying and the danger of not trying. That is to say there is always risk, no matter how you may try to avoid it, or protect yourself. Whatever you want for yourself, do it for others. If you make even small acts of compassion a daily habit, you will feel empowered and liberated from your own hurts and disappointments. You shouldn't expect to benefit from being generous or supportive to others, but good deeds can lead to surprising results. You never know how much of a difference you can make in the world simply by performing a small act of kindness. Small ripples can set huge waves in motion. When you step outside of yourself and your own concerns to reach out for others, it will change you. You will be humbled and you will be inspired. But more than anything and more than ever, you will be overwhelmed with the feeling that you are a part of something much bigger than yourself. Not only that, you will also realize that you can make a contribution. Everything you do to make someone else's life better makes your life more meaningful. And last, there are no limits other than those we impose on ourselves. And that's a wrap on the book summary of Life Without Limits by Nick Wojcik. If you want to listen to over 500 book summaries, check us out on Spotify, Google Podcast, and Apple Podcast. If you want to watch 500 video book summaries, follow us on YouTube at Best Book Bits and subscribe to if you are into the written version of book summaries, check us out at bestbookbits.com where you'll find over 500 written book summaries to read. If you want to read new books, make new friends, get access to authors, and become a part of a community of book lovers, join our book club at bestbookbits.com forward slash book club. We will be involved in an environment of personal development and discovery. Also, if you want to be updated with the latest book summaries, join our weekly newsletter by popping your email in the link below. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you have an amazing day. Take care. Go out there and live your life without limits.